Hello, we're back. Uh, we're going to be looking at IWM. This is an index that mirrors the Russell 2000. And uh, the reason why I like this one, or at least wanted to begin tracking it, is because it follows the uh, 2,000 stocks, the, the bottom 2,000 stocks of the 3,000 largest companies. So uh, basically the idea here is it's going to give us an idea of what's going on with those small cap type stocks, the companies that are majority below say like 10 billion dollars in terms of market cap and the thinking of course is those smaller companies if we see that they're growing very rapidly like like all companies but especially even mark even the the small caps during uh, ever since the crash of in 20 when they grew if we can capture one of those smaller those one of those small cap stocks there's there's a greater likelihood that when one of those starts to pop, it's gonna pop very rapidly, especially compared to a bigger company that's already well developed. Because, you know, a company that makes maybe a billion dollars in revenue, it's very easy for them to go from one billion to say like five billion. Or if that number's too big, to go from say 500 million in revenue to a billion dollars in revenue because most companies, their total addressable market is very large. And so if all of a sudden they have some innovation or some sort of just competitive ad advantage to other companies in the market, uh, they could easily take shares off of another company. And I think a good example of that would be uh, AMD and Intel. Intel dominated the computer market, the semiconductor market, and then all of a sudden they started slacking off and thinking that they could just go on cruise control for a number of years. And so they kind of stopped innovating as much. And what happened, all of a sudden AMD, who's a player for a long time, all of a sudden they continued to innovate. And just by taking, say, a 5% market share from a company like Intel, because AMD was so small, that 5% market share that they took that drove their stock price through the roof because 5% to Intel, maybe they lost a couple billion dollars and to a company that large that was like 20 or 30 billion. Yeah, you, you saw it, but it, it's not like it ruined the company. But for someone like AMD, who at the time was making maybe one or two billion dollars to steal one or two billion dollars from a competitor, I mean, they just doubled, if not tripled in that same period because they were so small to grow so rapidly like that. And so that's kind of the thinking here. That's why you want to track these. Of course, the difficult part of this is then finding which company within the 2000 is kind of seeing that type of growth. Because if we look at the holdings, it's very diversified. So again, 2000 companies, uh, the top 10 holdings, they could have really just picked anyone they wanted because everyone is very small. You, you can see these are what they're calling the top 10. No one here, the, the largest one I'm seeing has 0.31%. And if we just, I'm curious to see what happens if we do, uh, let's see, one divided by 2,000. I mean, this is what it should be. This is... 0.05% and we're seeing 0.3%. So really if it was divided equally, everyone should have a 0.5. So there is some weight here, but it, it's virtually nothing. Uh, so they do have some here. Uh, the only ones that I really know is Crocs. I mean, that's like the, uh, the shoes, the Crocs. I don't know any of these other ones, not off by heart. Um, not that I couldn't look into them, but that, that's kind of the idea of why we want to look at this and just kind of get a sense of what's going on with those smaller cap stocks. Uh, so just, we'll start off just like normal. Uh, we'll draw in a couple uh, horizontal lines here to kind of see what is the bottom. It seems like 162 is the bottom. We'll, we'll mark out the peak. 
that's not what we want. We want the horizontal line. This peak at around 239. If we were to draw in a what seems to be this line is speaking to me right now, one 196, that seems to be like the new sell point. And I can maybe bump that up just a little bit to 198. That seems to be like the new sell point because it's not necessarily trending down, but it does seem to be bouncing between these lines. So if I were to draw in a buy point, I think that's kind of ideal right there, about 172, and we're very close to that. Um, as I've kind of been catching up with, you know, just learning about the market, it seems like a lot of people feel like the market as a whole is going to trend downwards for the next, uh, just the remainder of the first half of 23. So if that's the case, I, I, I'm not necessarily going to write off the whole year, but n understanding that maybe what's going to happen here is it's going to continue trending downwards for the next couple of months. If that's the case, then that just means it's probably a, we're going to see better times to buy. But just right now, that that is my point that I'm looking at. And then if we were to draw in like a fair value type line, I can already see something that I'm interested in right about here, right around 186. And I'm just basing that off the fact that it did act as resistance two times in its most recent period back in June of 22 and most recently in November of 22. Um, and right now, I guess even most recently in February, uh, just last month, it kind of just bounced between that fair value and the sell point, And then it just crashed through it. And now it's very close to the sell point. So my initial impression is it's currently at 176. My buy point would be at 172. A sell point would be 198. And then I'll just throw in today's date. So this one, I'd be interested in buying. I feel like we'll go back to a monthly chart just to see. Overall, it seems like it's in an uptrend. We'll see if we can kind of capture most of this. Like right about here seems to be the bottoms. Maybe it just grew very quickly, too fast uh, during this period, and now it's just coming back to reality. But ideally, it would continue to trend upwards. And then if we want to kind of catch the highs here, the highs would be about like that. So maybe it just kind of went outside of its range, and now it's coming back to reality. And so if we zoom back into the weekly chart, kind of at a great spot, in my opinion. It's it's near the our green buy point. It's at the bottom end of the uptrend line in purple. I think now is a decent time to buy. I, I wouldn't be opposed to that. I think uh, sometime this week I will make a purchase in this and just kind of see how it plays out. Won't go all in, of course, just maybe a share or two. And... Um, so I guess to kind of close out, uh, so here's I, IWM down here at the bottom. Uh, you can see it's currently 176. Uh, an ideal buy point for me would be 172. And then I would potentially sell or just get out of this stock at around 198. Uh, but again, uh, the thing is, it's clearly in an uptrend. So if we go back out to a monthly chart, clearly in an uptrend. Uh, this is probably a stock that I wouldn't really want to do the buy and sell type trading mentality. It would be more of a buy and hold this one for years to come. But that's, that's my opinion. Let me know your thoughts in the comments. And uh, please like, subscribe, and I will see you on the next one. Bye.